Hey, good day, folks. I'm Marty, also known as Raging Albert on social media. So as it comes up every, about every six months or so, sometimes more frequently, fudging die rolls as the dungeon master, game master, lore master, whatever master you happen to be, has come up again on social media. And I definitely fall in the camp of not liking fudge in my games or when I'm a player for the GM to fudge, mostly be due to player agency. And I have some blog posts and videos on that in the past, but I do get the counter argument. And for those, and, and I'm not likely to change many minds. However, I have an idea that could help. If you are a game master who thinks, you know what, I need to fudge every once in a while because they're sometimes bad dice luck get in the way of telling a good story. Um, I, I disagree with that point of view, but I, I understand it. There are times when the dice are just rolling like crap and the players are feeling a little frustrated. Um, things are not going their way. And the game master thinks, you know what, let's, let's just tip the scales a little bit in their favor so we can get through this combat and somebody doesn't die for no reason at all. I understand that. I don't personally agree with that. I think that, you know, a TPKs don't actually happen that often. So you don't usually have to interview player death should be something that, that is a danger in the game. Cause that, that is what the stakes are. The stakes are possible death. Um, but you know, I, I get the, I do understand the kernel of dice luck can be fickle and sometimes you want to help out with that but there's a better way in my opinion than fudging the dice and that's basically one of these now in DD, they're called inspiration but in other games they're they could be fate points bennies luck fortune call it what you like but it's some sort of token, a resource that can be spent by the players in order to modify a scene or an outcome or something like that. Now, in D&D, the inspiration token is used primarily to give your players advantage or something similar on a die roll that is critical. But there's no reason that we can't expand the definition of inspiration. And there's a reason I like this idea better than the Game Master fudging, is this puts the resource and the decision-making in the hands of the players where it should be. It's their, it's their game. It's not just your story as a Game Master. It's a shared story amongst the entire table. Um, it's the players, their actions, their declared actions that move the d direction of the plot or the outcome of the scenario. It shouldn't be the game master who's determining that. It should be the rules and the actions of the players. And what you can do is very easily modify inspiration to avoid bad dice luck and not necessarily have to lie to your players about changing the outcome of the dice um, and, you know, cheat against the rules of the game because it is a game that we've all agreed to abide by the rules. Whether you're a player or a game master, you know, the intention is to abide by the mechanics. And this making this subtle change to inspiration means that everybody can still be playing on the level playing field with the same rules, but it can mitigate those nights where you're like, oh man, everything is going against the players right now and something needs to be done. So here's what you do. At the beginning of every session, everybody gets inspiration. And, and, and the nice thing about this too is inspiration, I believe, is one of those very underused mechanics in fifth edition. So this, I think, adds something extra to inspiration that makes it more valuable 
for players and makes them want to spend it, it makes them want to use it, it makes them not forget. And the way you can modify that is very simple. If uh, a player gets hit by a foe and it's a critical hit, does a lot of damage, allow them to spend the inspiration, turn a critical hit into a standard hit. You could even let them see the damage roll and say, you know, oh, that's going to be 20 points of damage. And they could be like, nope, let's have that. Here's my inspiration. I'm luck is with me tonight. I was able to, I got stabbed or whatever. I got smacked, but I rolled with it and, you know, avoided the nasty, you know, <laughs> sword to the kidneys kind of situation. So that's one way right there. Uh, take a, take a critical hit. I keep dropping the darn thing. Take a critical hit, turn it into a regular non-critical hit. That's one. Second, take a saving throw, a big saving throw that they needed to make. And instead of giving them advantage on it, say, spend an inspiration, you automatically pass that save. Why not? You, it, it, It's not, you're already, you know, whatever, fudging the dice rolls behind the screen. Instead of doing that, you are putting the power in the player's hand to determine their own fate. You're not making the decision for them. You're not removing their player agency. You are saying, I'm giving you a resource that can help you, but you have to spend it wisely. And then that way, they have that narrative control. It's not you deciding what's good or bad for the story. It's the group at the table working that story together, playing that game together, and, and saying, you know what? I need, I need to save myself. This is one of those times where you know, I need the, to, the lucky dodge. I need to. So, again, you know, use inspiration to turn a crit into a non crit. Use inspiration to automatically pass a save. Um, there's any number of minor adjustments you can make along those lines with inspiration that will save that player from a, a massive run of bad luck on the dice. And I get it. I understand that very well. I was playing just last night in a game. Um, and my I had a wizard. And I was trying to, you know, we were playing a low-level D&D. And I wanted to contribute to the party. And I was when I was rolling my damage, I kept rolling a one. I rolled a one three times in a row on the damage dice when I was trying to pew, 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 one of the foes. But that's the game, you know? Sometimes you get that. And then the thing is, the fourth time, I rolled the eight. At a critical moment, when, you know, things were looking not so great, I pulled out some damage. We got through the encounter. And, you know, that was a great moment, you know, to be like having some of that bad luck that you sometimes get. But then, you know, as any game, statistics will eventually even out for you. And, you know, that's that's part of D&D. That is a, that is a uh, not just part of D&D. That's kind of a core part of D&D is you understand the stakes going in. You understand you you say, "Hey, that's like that's like eight goblins and there's only four party members." Do we think we can take eight goblins or do we need to come up with a better plan? You know, maybe we don't go toe to toe. Maybe we figure out another way to either avoid this encounter or stack the odds in our favor. And that's the great thing about D&D is those choices that the players are making. They get to decide what, what the level of danger is for their characters. They get to decide whether they're going to Leroy Jenkins and run straight in and, you know, perhaps put everybody in danger. And in those cases, if a TBK happens, that's on the players because they made the decision to take on a situation that was not in their favor. Better for them to learn and plan better from that. So I'm I'm very strongly against saving the players when they do something stupid and 
and the 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 outcome, the negative outcome, is a direct consequence of their poor actions. That is that is definitely. I don't feel like you should save the players in that case. I do understand the desire to help the players when it's not poor planning or a, a stupid decision or something like that, where they actually are just getting a real string of bad luck. I get it. I, I do get it. But there are other ways. And repurposing something like inspiration is definitely a better way. But there are, there are you know, any number of other methods that you could use, other ways you can sort of tweak the dials of combat in a sense, without having to, you know, roll the die and change the actual result. So, you know, I, I definitely say think about it. Consider actually rolling all your dice in the open, and that would definitely make that inspiration chip more valuable because you throw that dice out there, they see the results, and they have that option to then spend their resource if they need to. And it definitely makes inspiration of a even more valuable resource. So if you don't want your players to die because of some stupidity based on the dice, not their own stupidity, but because of just some poor luck, this I think is a good uh, sort of a good way to mitigate that. And again, what's most important about it is that puts that power into their hands. You don't have to lie to them about what's going on in the game. So you keep that trust. You keep that player DM trust, which is super important. And you are not becoming a narrator, a dictator of the story. They get to choose when to use that resource. When is it important to get that saving throw to to turn that crit into a non-crit. When are those moments critical, <laughs> pun unintended, to utilize that? So uh, think about that as an alternative to fudging in your game. And I would definitely consider rolling in the open because I started doing that for my game. Put a dice tower right out in the middle of the table, and I dropped my rolls for for the uh, the foes right out so that it rolls so everybody can see it and it has just raised that sort of heightened that tension raised the stakes that much because they know I'm not going to save them it's up to them to save themselves it's up to them to clench victory from the jaws of defeat that I'm I'm not going to you know fudge the dice in their favor they have to play smart so give it a shot. You know, I don't I don't think you'll regret it. I think you'll find that that will take a, sh a big burden off your shoulder because, you know, maybe Susie died to a bad dice roll and you save her. But now Brian's going down because he's got some bad dice rolls. Oh, wait, were you going to save not save him and save the other person? OK, well, then you save him. Well, and then where does it end? You know, where's that line? Well, when do you stop saving your party members? And then when have you then taken all of the tension, all of the danger off the table? At that point, you're not really playing D&D &D anymore. Maybe you should try a different system that's less lethal. Honestly, especially with 5th edition, I think the, the party death and the TPK situation is a red herring. I, I don't believe that's why people are really fudging the dice. I think it's more about wanting the story to go in the direction that they want and not necessarily what the dice dictate. But that's me. You know, maybe maybe that's not you. Maybe you're just like, I only want to sit, help my players have a good time. Well, let them help themselves have a good time. It's not your job. Your job is to play the impartial judge and referee and help bring the world to life it's up to them to save themselves and become the heroes thanks everybody i'm marty i appreciate the uh 
the view. And I hope you uh, like and, you know, well, go ahead and subscribe. You never know. Maybe you don't agree with me with everything that I put out there, but I'll try to do it in an entertaining way. So thanks. Have a good day.